Pleasure, thank you ever so much for coming along. Um, and right now, I'd like to introduce the man who's to blame, really, for, for United Patients Alliance, along with a few of his colleagues. Uh, but nevertheless, he's our founder, he's our exec director, and also a mass patient. Clark French. It 
it reduces all of those symptoms and patients are really in desperate need of this, of, it's like an emergency, you know, they need it now. Despite being heavily um, medicated on pharmaceuticals through childhood, so I couldn't swim at school with the other kids, couldn't do sports sometimes. Um, yeah, despite being heavily medicated, it progressed into full-blown epilepsy, and when I was 12, uh, I was at work with my dad, and I knocked myself out of work with a tonic-clonic seizure. And um, so medication hasn't stopped my epilepsy. It still plays a major part in my life. But um, the longest time I was seizure free was 18 months and that's when I was getting donated some cannabis oil from Holland and as I say I stayed seizure free for 18 months and when you have seizures every other week that is life changing. Uh, for, for me, it had, you know, people were telling me I grew into concentration. This, no, 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 not at all. No, for me, this was the first thing in my life that actually stopped all these flipping voices going on in my head that could actually allow me to focus on one thing. And as it happened, also the stress, the stress pain that I had all around my neck and shoulders for all my life that had just gone, and any social anxiety that had gone too. You know, I went downhill so fast, uh, desperately, repeatedly going back to Amsterdam five, seven times a year, trying to get medicine, trying to grow my own. Eventually, I got so ill, I couldn't do anything like that. Uh, planning my own suicide. <laughs> 2011, I had a relapse that was so bad. I got qualified. You know, I lost the ability to do any walking or anything like that. I couldn't even watch the TV or listen to music. Everything had to be turned off. I was so ill. I qualified for Santa Fe because it's supposed to be neuroprotective. And I had to wait till I'd gone so far down the hill to qualify for this. But I thought, great, I will have to think about growing, growing to understand this was going to help me. Uh, I've got autism, which I was diagnosed with in my final year at university when I was 23 years old. And I've also got um, ADHD, depression, anxiety, and IBS, all of which are helped by cannabis. Um, and the, the Paul Flynn's bill, <coughs> which you can see from up there, uh, unfortunately did not get rid. Um, it did not make the 230 cut off. Um, and unfortunately, the Elizabeth Price bill will now kind of get knocked onto the bottom of some list later. Um, but Elizabeth Price, I don't know how many people uh, are aware and, and know who she was, um, but probably 20, 25 years ago, maybe a member of her family can tell us the exact time, um, she was in here arguing with Paul Flynn, or, or, or getting Paul Flynn support, and it, it's kind of what led to our tea party out there, is because Paul Flynn managed to get her a, a, a cup of tea to take with the cannabis in the House of Lords, and she was a, a great, great campaigner from many, many years ago. Um, unfortunately, she has passed on now. Today marks her birthday. Would like to come up and say a few words? But she'd be incredibly proud of what's happening. Uh, and like I said last time, she was a real, a real fighter uh, and could really come up against politicians who wasn't scared of, like, basically breaking the law inside Parliament, Jimmy. And like, really doing it properly. And uh, the stories are inspiring today, really inspiring. The, the number of uh, um, medical issues that come as helps, I didn't, I didn't know that when I was half of them. And it's just incredible that the bravery that people have to come up and stand here. And... It's one that takes its toll on many, many veterans and civilians who describe as a conflict alike, and that's post-traumatic stress disorder. <coughs> I've been joined the army at the tender age of 16. I served for 14 years with three different inf infantry units. Around six of those years were on active service on the streets of Fulton, Northern Ireland. This is really one that I want to put for the policy makers. You once trusted me, and you still trust people like me to protect this nation with a loaded weapon. Now, now trust us to heal ourselves with the help of the problem. Back in 2012, I was diagnosed with ER positive breast cancer. Had two surgeries, all the chemo and all the radiotherapy. Was given the all clear from cancer for three years. In 2016, I was diagnosed with stage four lung adenocarcinoma with breast cancer bone mess. I was told in no uncertain terms that I would die of this or an accident. I was given six months to live, 
My expiry date was the 3rd of June 2017. I'm still here. Yeah. I've not had any surgery or oncology treatment so far, as we can't find a compromise. I've been managing my health with cannabis in various forms and homeopathy. I have the full written support and records of my integrated team led by my GP, alas and except for my oncologist. I'm one of thousands of cancer criminals running our own self-funded living trials with cannabis and cancers. It is tough having to will yourself out or walk slowly out into the public eye to say, look, this is me, this is my life. This is how bad it got. We shouldn't have to do that. I'm fed up with doing that. All of you are fed up with doing that too. This is why we need to push home now. If we do everything we can now, we're not going to have to do this much longer. Now is the time to work doubly as hard as we have done for the last few years, because if we do now, it will be months, not years. Months until we get medicine in our hands. Will that be the perfect solution? Probably not. But from there, we can fight from a stronger position for everything else that we need. We can fight for the rights of other people to consume cannabis. Yes, it is true. It's very important that the line between recreational and medicinal is kept right as it is right now because we live in this world of prohibition. Because if we go with the recreational thing, it's going to take us many, 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 many more years. Let's get the patience of the battlefield now. Let's reduce the pain and suffering of people now. And then those people who are in no longer pain and suffering, guess what they're going to do? They're going to fight for everybody else's right. So you need to get behind us so we can get behind you. Thank you all for coming today. Again, please share, no, no patient left behind. Um, if some of the patients want to come over and have a quick photo before we leave, that would be brilliant. Thanks to everyone for coming. And uh, remember to email your MPs. Remember to do everything that you can to make this historical change happen. We are on the verge of victory. We are going to do this, not if, but when. And that when is soon. So I'm really pleased. Thank you. Future will rely on